let's let's go ahead and start the network. Uh, not start, but build the network, or start building the network with all the with all the devices that we just talked about. Let's say, for example, that we have a small network. Uh, at the beginning, we just start our business. We have a brand new office. We have uh, just four PCs. So with four PCs, we can just use a hub um, in order to connect all these uh, network devices, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and connect the devices to the hub. And the, now you have a network up and running. There's one thing missing, I'm going to do that right now, but the network is already connected. We have all PCs connected to hub. They should be able to communicate once you are you configure an IP address to them. At the mo at this moment they are not uh able to reach each other. They don't know they exist. So let me go ahead and then configure an IP address. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect and configure that uh, uh, the rest of the PCs. I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished configuring IP addresses on all the uh, PCs. Uh, here's one, two, three, I believe. Yeah, three and four. Let's go ahead and ping number one from here. See if there's communication. Ping 182, 168.10.1. And as you can see, there's communication. Now, let me show you um, in simulation mode what does that looks like. There's the frame. It's gonna go into the um, hub, and what will the hub do with the ones that receives the frame? Do you remember? That's correct. It will uh, replicate that same frame out of, uh, in this case, out of three other ports: this one, this one, and this one. Uh, except the one that it came in. If there were more devices connected, the the hub will uh, replicate that same frame out of those ports as well. It goes to the switch to the hub. I'm sorry, and the hub sends it out of every other port. The only PC, the only device that is going to accept and process that uh, frame is the PC that the frame is intended for. Uh, the other two will realize that it's not for them, and they will drop the frame. Again, this is, uh, now we have just a basic network. Uh, these are just PCs, but you can have a printer here or a server, whatever. Let's say that your business is start, uh, starts working properly or starts being successful and you start growing and you need more PCs. Uh, if, let's say, for example, that we need uh, four other PCs. We're going to add another four uh, other PCs to another office that you have because you're expanding and because we still do not have that many uh, end devices we're still going to use another hub we, we can do that and we you can this could be a different network a separate network just like this one connected to uh, the other hub the other the device is connected to the other hub and you can also connect the hubs to each other to make one big network we're going to go ahead and do that. There you go. Now we have uh, one big network. We used to have one network with a hub. Uh, now we have two hubs and, and other devices. I'm going to configure these other PCs with the IP addresses. I'll be right back. Okay, I've configured the other PCs. Uh, this is uh, 10.7. Let's go ahead and we should be able to ping anywhere to anywhere. So we're going to ping to that PC from this one here. Ping 192.168.10.7. And we get a reply. We're going to see it in simulation so you can see the frames flying. Now look at this, what is going to happen. This frame here is going over to this PC here. Now if this were switches, this frame will go to this switch, then this switch will send it to this switch, and this switch will send it down to this PC. We're going to see that later when we connect switches. But because these are not switches, they are not intelligent devices, as soon as this frame hits this, switch, this hub, the hub will send it out of every other port, here, here, here. 
and also out of this port here the frame will come over to this switch to this hub I keep saying switch sorry to this hub and the same thing will happen the hub will send it here 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 and here and again only this PC will uh, process and and reply to that frame if it needs to if it needs to every other device will drop the packet with the frame let's see if that happens there you go we involved um, one two three four five other devices that they they were not supposed to get involved they were not meant to get involved only this only this PC needed that frame that's it uh, so uh, uh, can you imagine uh, as you can imagine uh, a very large network with hundreds of PCs this will be very unproductive the network could start uh, uh, actually slowing down because of all the broadcast messages uh, and all the um, uh, frames uh, replicated frames and also because of collisions let me go ahead and uh, let's say for example that we keep growing our, our networks our business is very successful uh, we need to add more employees more networks more um, I'm sorry more workstations to our network we need basically we need to enlarge our network uh, so this time we're going to uh, let's say for example that we just added I'm not going to do that because uh, of course uh, there are limitations uh, for packet tracer and for simulations that is let's say for example that on this network it grew enough to have like 200 PCs and then on this network there's another 100 PCs so there's uh, or end devices so there's a total of 300 end devices connected to not to these two hubs there's going to be more hubs than, than, than just these two of course but these have represent those uh, PCs you can imagine the collisions are happening a lot and uh, uh, the hubs are very busy uh, because remember uh, there's a document in my blog called in my blog called uh, broadcast domains and uh, collisions domains you can go ahead and read about go ahead and read about that um, collisions are not a good thing on large networks uh, because they're start slowing, slowing down the network whenever two devices uh, two or more devices try to communicate at the same time uh, a collision will happen uh, the frames will be dropped and the uh, and the sending devices will have to resend those frames the more uh, end devices that are connected to a network the more collisions it will have so now there are, uh, there our business grew and we have like 300 end devices connected to our, our little hubs here uh, there are a lot of collisions and our network uh, started uh, um, getting slow slowing down so we're gonna go ahead and split that those networks in two we're gonna put a bridge here a bridge breaks up a collision domain so in this case we have one big collision domain the collision domain is all of this at the moment because we have two hubs right so if we put a bridge here let me go ahead and do that if we were to put a bridge here the collisions domain will be broken in two like this we only have one collision domain here and another collision domain here so collisions can happen either on this side or on this side but not the whole thing so that will be a way to make to uh, alleviate our network from collisions and things like that um, um, of course um, we are talking about old networks uh, either even uh, hubs and um, bridges were used uh, uh, many many years ago they are no longer used hubs you can still find some places but you're not going to find that many at all uh, bridges are almost obsolete uh, bridges were used because of what just I just explained and also to uh, connect two different types of networks for example an ethernet network uh, with a uh, token ring network uh, nowadays the only thing that we use or the most popular uh, network type by far is ethernet so there's no no and and switches are their own they, their, and switches break up uh, collisions domains uh, each port on a switch is its own collision domain not like a hub so they are no longer are used for bridges and bridges are, are, are already obsolete let me go ahead and pause here I'm gonna connect the bridge here and we're gonna continue okay I just connected the bridge notice that the bridge is not 
uh, turning green right away that is because bridges as switches use uh, they run STP spanning tree protocol to prevent loops uh, we're not going to get into that right now but there is another document in my blog called uh, STP spanning tree protocol for C CCNAs you can go ahead and read that um, STP has converged on this bridge and so now we can communicate from one side of the bridge to the other we said that a bridge breaks up a collision domain so I'm gonna show you what happens now uh, what what the bridge does is it lets uh, packets or frames uh, go through if they are intended to go over to this side if they are intended to go over to this side of the network if they are not intended to go over to that side of the network the bridge will uh, stop that frame same thing uh, if uh, on the other uh, and vice versa that is if the frame needs to go over to this side from this network to this network like this it'll let them go through if it doesn't need to go through it'll stop it let me go ahead and show you that first we're gonna go ahead and ping this PC here which is dot four from PC 11 I'm not able to and I don't know why wait a minute some sort of bug uh, uh, is affecting my recording software because sometimes it doesn't let me click through that uh, through the recording window. Anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and ping now. That four, and we're gonna see the packets, the frames fly. It reaches the bridge. The bridge knows already. Oh, one thing I should know: a bridge, just like a switch, will learn MAC addresses. They it, it knows about the MAC addresses living on this side and on this side. Uh, the only difference, though, is that a, a, a bridge uses software to to uh, create the MAC address table and 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 uh, all the entries uh, to learn MAC addresses. It uses software as opposed to a switch that uh, that it does it uh, with hardware. Uh, they are called ASICs, application specific uh, integrator cir circuits. Uh, anyhow, so now this frame is gonna go through the bridge because the bridge knows that it's trying to get to this network here and it's gonna get to the uh, PC2 as it is intended. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now, and now it's coming back and it's gonna eventually get to PC11. I'm gonna let it go do that. Notice every time that the only PCs keeping the frame and processing it are, is the ones that are communicating, the others always drop the frame. Now, let me go ahead and ping from PC11 to PC8, for example, that it's in this side of the network. The bridge will not let that frame go through uh, because the, fr the it knows that the MAC address, that the um, destination address is on this PC, is on this side of the network, not on the other side this is that five that five so again this frame is gonna go to the hub the hub is gonna flood it or replicate it and as soon as it gets to this bridge the bridge is not gonna let this frame go through the, the other network because it knows that it doesn't belong there. it doesn't want to reach that network Uh, I shouldn't say network because it's, it is the same network. It doesn't want to reach that side of, of the network. That, that's, that's much better. See? It drops that frame because it knows that it's, uh, that MAC address, the destination MAC address, is not on this side of the network. Uh, so it drops it. It doesn't let it go through. That's why we say that it breaks up collision domains. And again, this PC will keep the frame process it. The other ones, the other devices will drop it. Okay, let's move on. Okay, I just finished adding uh, a switch and more PCs. I'm just finishing the cabling. 
Again, notice that switches, as oh, this is already connected, uh, they're not turning green um, immediately as the hub did. Uh, the, uh, this hub and this hub, not this one, this is a bridge. Um, remember that I said that uh, bridges and switches, they run STP, uh, Spanish Free Protocol. That's what it's doing right now. Again, there's a document called Spanish Free Protocol for CCNAs in the blog. You can read about that. Right now, what we're going to do is uh, learn about switches. Remember that we talk about uh, MAC address um, table being kept by the switch. We're going to see if we can see that now. Uh, show MAC address table and there's one PC uh, the switch received one frame from a p from a device on fast internet zero one that's why you learn the MAC address so we're gonna find out wh which one is uh, fast internet zero slash one and that device connected will have the uh, MAC address ending with 4309 Zero two. Oops. Come on. Zero four. Zero three. This should be zero one. Oh, I see. That's zero one. So this hub. Sh I don't know if I'm going to be able to see the MAC address on the hub. I never did it. <coughs> We're going to find out together. But that that MAC address on the hub, if we can see it, will will end with four three zero nine. I don't see a MAC address here. Come on, and I don't see a MAC address here. No, I didn't think I was gonna see a MAC address, but there is one, of course. Every single device has a MAC address in it. Uh, unless no, it's not gonna be here. Uh, we are not able to see that at the MAC address, but. Um, this hub has that MAC address in it, as we can see by the MAC address table. We're gonna, I'm going to ping from this PC to any other PC, let's say this one here, which is that 9. The frame is going to, the switch is going to receive a frame on port fast Ethernet 04 and it's gonna add another entry to its MAC table. Let's go ahead and do that. This is 9. So we're gonna go ahead, oops, and ping 192.168.10.9. I'm in real time. Mm, let me move to simulation so we can see the frames flying. I like to say that. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Where's the frame? Oh, here we go. There's the frame. So the frame is gonna hit the switch on fast Ethernet 04. Is that correct? Yeah, zero 04. And we're going to see another entry for fast Ethernet uh, slash zero 04 on that uh, port, which we do not see now. The only one that we have is fast Ethernet zero slash 1. So capture forward. The switch received that frame, and we're going to repeat that command. And now we can see two entries. This is the one that we added. So we look if we look at that PC, we're gonna see uh, PC 15. That is, we're gonna see that its MAC address ends with E578. There, on the right, you see E578. We can also see it here. Oops, here E578. That is its MAC address. Now, remember that a uh, hub receives the frame and it flats it out of every other frame. This first time that we did this, the fly the switch is going to do the same thing. Why? Because it doesn't know uh, where where that P where PC14 is connected. This PC is, is trying to find out. That's why it's doing ARP. ARP matches uh, a uh, IP address which we know we already entered that. Uh, 192.168.10.9 to a MAC address. What this PC doesn't know is that the MAC address for this PC. So it sends an ARP request. The switch receives it. It doesn't know where that PC is at, so it's going to flood that frame out of every other port this time, um, hoping that one of the PCs or one of the end devices will reply with that information. In this case, it will happen. PC14 will reply. 
every other device that receives that frame will drop it, but PC14 will reply with its MAC address in it. The switch will receive it on port 5, uh, I'm sorry, not 5, 5, fast Ethernet 0 slash 5. Uh, when it does, it'll make another, en it'll put another entry in its MAC address table and send it back to PC15. Let's see if that happens. Now it's going to flat. It does. Every other device is going to drop it except the PC14. That is what happened. Oh, this doesn't, uh, the hub does not drop it because it's going to flat it. It's going to replicate it, remember? We said that. Uh, now uh, PC14 is going to respond or reply. There we go. Now this frame here already has m the MAC address for PC14. So if we repeat the command here on the switch, we will see another entry. Three this time. There we go. It knows uh, about this other PC, PC14. So it sends the um, frame out of that port to PC15. Remember that when we ping from PC15 to PC14 the first time, as soon as the switch received that frame, it didn't know where it was located, with PC14 was located, so it just flatted the frame. We're going to, re we're going to repeat that ping. However, the switch this time is just going to send it out of this port, out of port fast Ethernet slash uh, 0 slash 5, because if we look at the Mac, uh, MAC address table, it already has an entry for that port. And know that this, it knows that this uh, MAC address lives off of um, fast Ethernet 0 slash 5. So let me reset the simulation and repeat it again. Wait a minute. There we go. And let's see what happens. This was PC9, right? Dot 9? Yeah, it was. So. Uh, gonna hit is the frame is going to hit the switch. The switch this uh, before, as before. I'm sorry, before uh, uh, flooded all the the frame out of every other port. Again, because it didn't know now, because it does know where uh, PC14 is, it's just gonna send it out of out of that uh, port. There you go. No need to bother anybody else. That's the difference between a switch and a hub. Much better. I just thought about something else uh, that you should find interesting. Um, how many uh, MAC address, ad addresses are connected to this port, uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 5? Just one, right? And how many MAC addresses are connected to this port on the switch, fast Ethernet 0 slash 3? Just one, right? Now let me ask you this. How many MAC addresses are connected to this port on the switch, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1? Good question, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. More than 10 devices are connected to this switch, to this port. So what do you think it would happen if we were to ping from this PC to any PC on this side of the network? Let's go ahead and try it. First, let's look at the MAC address table one more time. It still has three... Uh, Let's do this. You already saw how the packets go. Let me see. Yeah, you already know how the packets, uh, the frames move in a switch and on a hub. So I'm going to start doing this in real time so it'll be faster. I think that the only MAC address that the switch hasn't learned is the PC12 because PC3 has not communicated yet. So I'm going to make it learn it. I'm going to just send a packet. Uh, ping. Uh, I can ping anything because I just have to make the oops wait a minute wait a minute I just have to make the uh, PC send a packet oh it doesn't have a I'm sorry no it's not gonna do that we don't have a router so we cannot send it uh, in order for this PC to try to ping uh, the address to that to that to that to which doesn't exist uh, the PC should have a default gateway configured which it does not so I'm just going to ping another address. Um, ping 192, that 
And now we should have the MAC address table on the switch. We have four entries. I think I just pinged myself. I did. 10.10, <laughs> uh, .10, which I just pinged, is myself. It's the same PC, it's PC12. So let me do it again. Uh, 11. Okay, let's go ahead and ping 11. Wait a minute. I want you to see this. I don't seem to be able to. There, now. Ping 11. Now we should, the switch will have four entries. And it does. Great. So, we were saying, now we're going to try to ping to this side of the network uh, to a couple of PCs, and we're going to take a look at the MAC address table again. You're going to see something interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and ping this PC. Dot one. Enter. We're going to look at the MAC address table again. We have five um, entries. What address is this? 74742. I'm sorry, 74442. And we have it right here. So this switch right now has learned that a device with a MAC address ending in 7442 lives off fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. And, then, uh, uh, and made that entry into the MAC address table. Let's go ahead and ping another uh, PC on this side of the network, uh, dot 3. And let's see what happens. It pings it. Now let's look again at the MAC address table on the switch. What, would, what, what do you think it will happen? That's right. It should have two entries for poor fast Ethernet slash, uh, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, right? That's right. There we go. Actually, it has three. The one they already learned uh, for the hub here, this interface here. The one from the uh, the second one for the PC zero that we ping, and the third one for the PC two that we ping. One, two, three entries. If we were to every time these PCs will communicate, uh, somehow sends a, a frame and it'll get to the switch. This switch will learn eventually every single uh, MAC address for these devices. Okay, let's go ahead and enter a final uh, device that we talked about in the blog, which is the router. I'll be right back. Okay, I just added our final pieces of uh, hardware, our, our final devices. Uh, 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 router, that is the final uh, uh, network device that we need to talk about. We said that a switch, or a hub for that matter, is used to connect network devices. In this case, we just use PCs, but we can have servers, laptops, uh, IP phones, or voice over IP phones, um, uh, printers, uh, whatever device that can accept an IP address, we can connect it here. Um, we said that a switch and a hub uh, are used to connect devices, uh, and a uh, router is used to connect networks. This is one network. They use. They all use the same network. In this case, the 10 network. Um, I'm thinking about getting into IP addressing and all that, but I'm not going to do that here. Uh, this is a video regarding the blog about um, network devices and what they do and their purpose. That's it. Um, there are other documents in the blog you can look in and learn about that. If they're not so uh, yet, we are, there's going to be one eventually. Okay. So this is the uh, 192.168.10 network. We're going to go ahead and make this the 192.68.20 network. So let me go ahead and configure. Actually, let me do that on the router first. We're going to go ahead and uh, see that the f interfaces are red. Those That means that they are shut down. Uh, by default, the interfaces on the router are always shut down. You need to uh, manually uh, bring them up, turn them on, as opposed to a switch where they're always on. The reason this one seems to be shut down is because this one is. Uh, the port on the switch is the port on the switch is not receiving any frames at all, so uh, it's not it's, it's an inactive link. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Fast Internet. Zero slash zero. 
let me label my router, change the host name, uh, interface zero slash zero, oops, whoa, zero slash zero, and we say IP address 192, that 168, this is the 10 network, and we can say 100, for example. Our MAC address, our network masks, oops, zero, and this is the command that you need to use to turn on the, let me move this aside and you will see turn it on. We are going to turn on this um, interface now. No shutdown. And the port turns on and it has a um, an IP address uh, assigned to it. I'm thinking about the default gateway. So should I do it now or should I talk about it later? Let's do it later. Let me turn this interface on, which is fast Ethernet zero slash one. Interface fast Ethernet zero slash one. IP address. This is going to be our twenty network. That one sixty. That twenty. That one hundred. Two five five. Two five five. Two five five zero. I usually use for the default gateways for the interfaces on a router I use the first available address uh, so in this case it should be 1 not 100 but because on this side I already used 1 on this PC here and I didn't think about not using it at the moment uh, I'm not gonna change it uh, so I'm gonna use just 100 on, on this side just so you know so we hit enter and we say no shutdown no shoot, we can abbreviate that. Okay, so let me configure this PC with the new MAC, ad uh, MAC address, IP address 192 168. That 20, that one. And let me pause the video and do the other three BRB. Okay. Our whole network is up and running now. By the way, guys, this is a horrible network. <laughs> the, uh, this is a horrible design of a network. Um, the only reason I did it like this is because it plays nicely into our uh, into my explanation. That that's it. Uh, but uh, it's not a very efficient network, would you say? It, it's not redundant. Well, I can say a lot of things. It's not a very good network. Anyhow, but it does it does get the job done as far as um, being able to explain uh, how all the devices work. Uh, this is a different network. This is the 192, the 168, that 20 network, and this right here is the 192, the 168, that 10 network. I remember that we said that uh. uh router connects connects uh, connects um, networks so this router is used in order for this network the that 10 network to be able to communicate with the that 20 network remember when we tried to ping I think it was from this PC no it wasn't from this PC let me see if I can get it no it wasn't from this one either I think it was this one no, it wasn't. The, yeah, here we go. When we try to ping um, to the to the to the two, okay, that network doesn't exist, of course. But the the computer doesn't know that. Uh, it knows that it lives on the 192, that 168, that 10 network, and uh, as far as it knows, um, that is a different network, of course. In order for to be able to either to communicate with that network if it exists, which it doesn't, but if it ex exists, it should be, and it wants to communicate with it, it should have a default gateway. When any PC is trying to uh, communicate with a an IP address that it doesn't belong to its network, it does it doesn't live on its network, uh, it's on another network and needs a default gateway in order to send that communication to the default gateway, which is the router. I'm, we're going to do that now, right now. Uh, and the router will receive that uh, um, packet destined for network 2.2.2.2 that two that two that two in this example and say it will look into its routing table and it will say okay you uh, the network 2.2.2 two that two that two lives on this uh, interface and it will send it out of this interface 
um, we're not. We, I, I I put the network two dot two dot two as an example because we use that here. Again, I have to move up. But we don't have that network. It doesn't exist. So we're gonna use the networks that do exist. If I was to ping this PC here, let's say for example. 20.4 from this network, from this uh, PC here on the other network, it's not gonna work. Ping that 192, that 168, that 20, that 4 is not, it's never gonna work because of uh, what I said before. This PC here is gonna time out. This PC is on this PC, this PC is only able to communicate with devices on its local network through MAC addresses. On this side of the network, here, let me do this. on this network here wait a minute no see that's what it does it doesn't let me it won't let me use the tools no it will here we go um, any PC that wants to communicate with PCs inside this red uh, square will use some the MAC address of the other PC like we saw before. But if it needs to communicate within a PC outside of its network, uh, it, it'll, it, no long, it will no longer use the MAC address, it will use the IP address and it will need an, a router. And that's what we have here. We said that a router keeps a um, routing table. Let's look at that routing table right now. Uh, show IP route. Let me make this wider so we go. This um, output is telling us that this router only router only knows. Man, this router only knows about two networks: the 168, the 192, that 168, that 10 network here, and that is connected to fast Ethernet zero, and it's directly connected. It tells you by the C that we see here because it's connected and also by the fact that it says directly connected out of fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and as you can see this is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 let me go ahead and try to ping to the PC again but this time we're gonna enter our default gateway so the default gateway is the IP address for the router and on this side we enter the 100 uh, address so we're gonna say that the default gateway is 192.168.10.100 and we're gonna go ahead and try to ping this PC again and this time it should work no it will not work and I will tell you why because the packet will arrive to PC PC19 was it that we're trying to ping? Four. yeah it was four the packet will arrive to PC19 but PC19 doesn't know how to get here because PC19 doesn't have its own doesn't have its own uh, ga the full gateway so we can have in computer we can have to configure that 192 that 168 that 20 that 100 now it will work basically what it means is that this PC now knows how to get out of its network and this PC now knows how to get out of its network that's why they will be able to communicate with each other now they should at least <laughs> and there you go it works just fine okay let me see if I can recap real quick because we did everything I'm not gonna go ahead and enter the default gateway on every other device because it's gonna take too long but it's the same thing that we did here we should do it on the other PCs in order for them to be able to get out of the network a router, I'm um, sorry, not a router, a hub receives a frame and it replicates that frame out of every other port. Um, a, a bridge breaks up collisions domains and also it's able to uh, connect, N not in this case, we did not do that, but it's able to, that's why it's called a bridge, uh, to co uh, connect two different types of networks. Uh, Ethernet, for example, and the token ring that are used to. Uh, it's an old type of network token ring is. Um, that's what a bridge does. Uh, a switch, we said that it was an intelligent device that learns MAC addresses. We looked at the 
um, MAC address table. We we seen we've seen how the switch learns about all the MAC addresses and out of uh, what port they are connected. We talked about the router that the router connects two different um, networks. Uh, the 192.68.20 network and the 192.68.10 network and our network is up and running and working I think we are not missing anything else hopefully this one under soon a little bit longer long uh, this is the longest video I've done so far um, I don't think I'm missing anything hopefully I didn't thank you very much for listening bye bye